I love the high-end specifications as much as you do, but sometimes I get tired of spending two to three hundred dollars on a high-end smartphone. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and Pantech may have our issues addressed with the Pantech Discover. Now, this thing's packing some awesome specifications, a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Snapdragon S4 CPU, 4G LTE, a 4.8-inch HD display, and then more, a 12.6 megapixel camera. That's super awesome as well. The one caveat, it does have Android 4.0, but what's really nice is that it's a $49 price tag. So for 50 bucks out the door, you can get this device with a two-year agreement. Is it worth it or should you spring that extra 150 bucks for maybe a Galaxy S3, a Note 2, or something like a One X Plus on AT&T? We'll find out in the review, but first, special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like the Discover for use in our One Paw Bandit giveaway game. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you'll walk out working, they'll get your email, your contacts, your Pantech experience set up on this device, so when you walk out the door, you're good to go. My phone's ringing, but let's take a look at the Discover and see if this is the ultimate device in the full review, which starts right now. Look, I'll be the first to tell you, Galaxy Note 2, Galaxy S3, One X Plus, Droid DNA, these devices made by Samsung and by HTC are really hot right now. They're the hot high-end devices to have in quarter one of 2013. But if you're looking for a great smartphone that doesn't break the bank, the Pantech Discover is one of my favorites. It's available now at AT&T for $49.99 with a two-year agreement. And specs-wise, yeah, there are some caveats in comparison to the high-end devices on the market. But what I love about this phone is it brings some great specs to a $50 price point. So no longer do you have to wait like six months for a device to come from $199.99 to like $49 or $99. You got a device that's 50 bucks out the door before any price drops that features some great stuff. It's got a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU, a 4.8 inch HD display, so 720p, a 12.6 megapixel camera on the back with flash and 1080p HD video recording, a 2100 milliamp hour removable battery, 4G LTE, and then the one caveat, it does have Android 4.0, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich with Pantex custom user interface. So yes, it's got an older version of Android, but again, keeping in mind cool things like stereo speakers, a 12.6 megapixel camera, a decent sized battery, and 4G LTE, and combining all that with the fact that it's $49, this is gonna be a device that appeals to a lot of people. Now the problem is in 2013, we've got our brand loyalties. People love Android, people love Samsung, people love HTC, and I think it's gonna be a challenge not just for consumers, but for retail reps as well to recommend this device over something like a Galaxy S3, a Galaxy Note 2, an HTC One X Plus, an AT&T. So the battle's twofold. The battle's getting consumers to adopt it, and then the other battle is to get retail reps to recommend it. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in part two. Now let's see what comes out of the box in this device. You do get some AT&T applications, but it comes with Pantex user interface. And first of all, before we jump into that, let's talk a little bit about the design. You've got stereo speakers on the left and right side. Nothing on this side in terms of buttons, but you do have a volume rocker over here. Micro USB charging port down at the bottom. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, power button, 12.6 megapixel camera on the back. And all you get is these little AT&T logos on the front and on the back. So nothing too gaudy in terms of a carrier logo. You got Pantech down here with on-screen buttons. Now, it's important to note that the on-screen buttons are obviously on-screen. So it is a 4.8 inch display, but when you factor in that, you do lose a little bit of the screen real estate. That said, out of the box, you do get some AT&T applications. Code scanner, drive mode, which I actually love this application. Drive mode's an application that when it's enabled, it sends a customizable auto reply message to incoming text to help curb texting while driving. You know, AT&T is really big on on their, <clears throat> excuse me, it can wait campaign. Pardon me, still a little bit sick from CES. It can wait campaign, and I absolutely love it. You know, we it can really wait, no texting while driving, let's keep everybody safe, and drive mode encourages that, and it's one of the first devices to come with drive mode pre-installed out of the box. So it underscores AT&T's commitment to no texting while driving. Device help as well, live TV, my AT&T, and then you get some unique Pantech applications, which we'll talk about as well. Pantech Easy Experience, which I like this one a lot. It carries over from some of their lower end smartphones, so they're appealing to a bunch of different demographics here. You know, they're appealing to the person that wants great specs but doesn't want to spend a lot of money. They're appealing to a first-time smartphone user as well because all you have to do is click that button and this thing's going to look a lot like a feature phone. Menu and then bam, there you go. You're right back into a feature phone looking thing. So if you get this for your grandma, your grandpa, perhaps your mom and dad that aren't, you know, particularly well versed in smartphones, you can get them started on this and then when they get used to it, you can change the experience from the easy experience back to more standard Android experience and then they can browse from there. So you can move pretty quickly back and forth between both of those and I really like 
that feature a lot. Other Pantech applications that I'm finding particularly useful in the time that I've worked with this device, I'll talk about the social one in just a second, but we'll go over here and take a look. <clears throat> And I did not mean to do that again. Let's go applications. Pill reminder is particularly useful. And again, underscoring the demographics that this device is appealing to. You've got your pill reminder right there. And then you've got, of course, Google Plus integration and the Google integration. Social gallery and social world, though, are particularly useful. And I'm finding social world to be really useful with managing Facebook and Twitter. So I can come into social world and take a look, for example, and you're seeing my phone dog underscore Aaron Twitter account. I can click on all feeds and easily access that and have access to my timeline, my mentions, my messages. I can post a message, hello, from the Pantech Discover review. Hello from the Pantech Discover review. You're seeing the keyboard, obviously. You've got a couple of different keyboard options here. I have it on the Android keyboard, but it has Swift key as well, so I can switch over to that. And you'll notice that the color theme is very similar to the overall theme that we're seeing on Pantech's user interface. So hello from the Pantech Discover review. I'll click that. And you know what? We'll go ahead and publish that without any music or pictures or any sort of contact information. So I'll send the post, and you'll see it pop up in just a second on my Twitter feed, and I'm doing it via social world. So I've got that, I've got my mentions as well. I can search, and then I can come over here and refresh, and you can see, there it is, right there, with my picture and with everything. And I can come in here and see my detailed uh, location information, my tweets, my followers, all of that stuff from right there. Now, you do have Pantex user interface out of the box here, and that's something you're either gonna love or hate. Keeping in mind this device is 50 bucks with all the specs you get, I certainly don't mind it. I actually think there are quite a few useful things in Pantex applications. Yes, it's not as fleshed out as LG's user interface, perhaps even more so as HTC's interface or Samsung's interface, but you do get some pretty useful apps and some things that I like. One that I'm finding particularly useful and actually, in the summit I was in last year, I recommended this before this started becoming a mainstream thing on Pantex UI. The ability to swipe in your actual area down here at the bottom, your little applications drawer area, to swipe to add more applications. So not only do you have you know, your four static ones that you can change around and your apps in the middle, but you can swipe to the left or swipe to the right and add more. So you know what? I want more applications down here. I want Notepad down here, for example. I want Google Plus down here. I can throw those down in there and then just swipe back and forth, so a lot of different options. So they do offer some unique customization abilities, and of course you're gonna see the skin install pretty much across the board here with little things like quick settings, which much like a Samsung approach here, you've got a bunch of different quick settings up top, and I can go quickly into my settings and see my experiences, my user theme, which I can click on this, and I have access to my, my lock screen, my dial pad, my default programs, and there are some pretty unique lock screens on this device as well. So don't, you know, don't underestimate Pantech because this device is $49. There still are some really unique customizations where I'm like, you know what, for 50 bucks, it's definitely worth looking at. So display, for example, I can come in here and see wallpaper. I can see all my different wallpaper options and you've got a couple different things there. Nothing too exciting there, but what you do get, we'll come down here to motion recognition. I find this one particularly useful. I have motion recognition turned on so I can wave my hand over the screen and move through my gallery. It's a unique Pantech feature, and so I should be able to start up my gallery and then move, let's see if I can do it. There we go. Motion recognition. As you can see back and forth through my gallery. Really a cool feature there, very similar to some of the motion stuff we've seen from other OEMs, but still really a nice feature all around. And then I have my lock detail settings. So what you're gonna see when you get it out of the box, this modern lock screen. This is Pantech's typical lock screen that comes out of the box. But what you can do is change it around. I have it on visual lock, which I find particularly useful. I've got shortcuts to a couple of different frequently used applications. So I can come in here and show you the shortcuts, for example, on visual lock. I have phone messages, Chrome, and Facebook. So when I turn it off and back on, You'll see phone messages, Chrome and Facebook, typical unlock button, but then if I want a quick access to Chrome, I just swipe like that and it loads me right up into my Chrome browser, which is out of the box. Accept and continue, no thanks. And let's take a look, speaking of, at phonedog.com. This device has 4G LTE connectivity on AT&T, so if you're in a market that supports it, it's a really nice feature to have, needless to say. Portrait landscape, nice and fast. One gigabyte of RAM on this device, so not quite up to the two gigabytes uh, industry standard with some of the high-end devices, but still, finding it all around to be particularly fast with pinch to zoom, portrait to landscape, all the usual stuff you'd expect with a browser test. And you get your tabs up here. Absolutely love Google Chrome. And I don't see nearly as much of a slowdown on this device. It has one gigabyte of RAM as I do on say the HTC One X, which also has one gigabyte of RAM. But because Sense is such a battery, or excuse me, a power hog, 
In terms of resources, you see it slow down a little bit more. Pantex UI does work relatively well with Android. I see a lot less lag than I've ever seen before on various other devices that have one gigabyte of RAM. Now that said, you got this down here as well, a little menu button where easy access to widgets, wallpapers, themes, and more. And I can add my widgets right through here and I've got kind of a little area to move back and forth. So I can move through my seven home screens. I can find one that I like. So let's say Notepad, for example. Throw it right up there in the top and then I've got easy access to my Notepad and I should be able to customize. Yep, customize the size and then I've got my Notepad right there. Stay tuned for part two. We're going to talk more about customization. We're going to talk about camera shortcuts, camera settings, see how that 12.6 megapixel camera performs, and of course the typical speed tests that you know and love. So stay tuned for part two.